welcome to another um, episode of Cherished Relix Boutique YouTube channel. Um, this is only my second video. Uh, I'm just learning the ropes here. And um, as I mentioned in my first video, um, a little bit about myself. My name is Curry and I um, uh, own an antique booth in the Pittsburgh area. Um, in, it's in a huge antique mall called E.N. Miller Antique Mall found in Verona, Pennsylvania. And um, the whole reason I've kind of found myself in the whole jewelry world is because although my actual antique booth has always done very well, I've put many items of jewelry, um, vintage and antique and modern, in my booth and it just doesn't move very well which drives me nuts because everything else about my booth does well. Um, and I just have quite a few pieces that are worth a lot. And I don't know, I'm just afraid to leave it there. So um, it's led me to, you know, investigating the whole world of um, selling um, some of my pieces on um, eBay, which I have now um, opened an eBay store, which is also called Cherished Relics Boutique. Um, and, uh, I don't have much listed on there yet. I'm trying to get it up and running. There's only, I think, like 12 items so far. It just takes a while each time taking pictures and the works, and I'm just slow because I'm a perfectionist. But I will get it up and moving much quicker in the next uh, few weeks. Um, that being said, uh, I uh, talked about how in my first video I was really just using it as a practice because, you know, this whole videotaping, showing jewelry thing looks so easy to all the pros. And it's really not. You got to figure out, you know, lighting and, you know, things being um, in and out of focus and not mumbling and jumbling your words and blah, blah, blah. And as I learned at the very end of my last video, not rambling on forever because before I knew it, I found myself at a 37 minute video and I really only got partially done what I wanted to. So. What I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to pick up where I left off. I had started to share um, how I have been, you know, buying some um, lots off uh, Goodwill, Shop Goodwill. Um, I don't like getting the regular costume jewelry lots as much. I found the most uh, fun that I've had and the most um, neat things that I've found, and to me, the best bang for my buck is to really um, bid on the scrap lots or just the wearable 925 or wear, wearable, um, you know, precious metal kind of lots um, because you can find some really beautiful stuff for some decent prices if you, you know, win a good auction, which I have. Um, actually, I just won two more auctions with a whole bunch of uh, 925 items in it, which I'll be showing you in future videos. That being said, all of this jewelry right here, I talked about in my first video. I talked about um, bidding on this one scrap lot that I spent like $81 for the lot. I had one cent shipping. Um, and then of course I paid shipping and handling and taxes. I think it ended up being somewhere around $90 when it was all said and done. Um, totally worth it. Um, this is only half of what was in that lot. And it was supposed to be a scrap lot. And as I mentioned to you before, so many pieces came to me in uh, perfect condition or close to perfect where I just had to do some small fixes. Um, I'm just going to briefly lift up these items. I'm not going to talk about them again. If you want to see the de details of these items, um, uh, look at my first video. But some things that came, uh, one of the things was this beautiful... Um, uh, Marcusite um, bracelet. Uh, no damage when I received it. Um, a lovely uh, Marcusite ring. Lots of beautiful detail. I hope that's focusing for you. There we go. Gorgeous. Um, and that's a got a garnet in it. And another pearl inlay ring. Very pretty, no damage as well. This um, opal ring, I had to do one quick fix. I did order some marcasite stones and have been learning about how to repair some jewelry, so I did replace one stone in there. Um, 
I think I called this in my first video a male ring. I don't really think that's the case. I think it is in fact a female ring. Um, it's just larger and not really my style, but again, that's a beautiful um, jade and onyx and marcasite ring also coming in that scrap lot with no damage. Um, these beautiful uh, marcasite, uh, also mother of pearl inlay, um, 925 earrings that um, came also with no damage. And they're quite beautiful. And I've enjoyed wearing this. Um, I don't know why this one came in the lot because the lot was a 925 um, scrap lot with marcasite and um, this doesn't have any marcasite in it, but it's a beautiful ring. Another jade beautiful ring that came in that lot, that same lot. I had this cute little turtle ring, also no damage. You hear me tapping, it's me literally trying to get it to focus. You see, this is still me learning. That's focused. It tends to want to focus on what's below. Let me try again. There we go. Beautiful uh, turtle ring. Um, love these earrings. These are, I've tested them with my, um, you know, gem tester. Uh, another beautiful pair of um, earrings. These are uh, garnet as well. Marcasite. 925, all of this is 925, still no damage. Um, also that came in that lot, also not a male ring, even though that's what I called it in my first video, but this has um, been tested and has a, a sapphire, ruby, and emerald, as well as marcasite. It's just a bigger ring. I think that's why I call it a male ring, but it's just kind of bigger on my hand. My fingers are so skinny, it just overwhelms my hand, but it would work beautifully on someone else's hand. Another ring that came in that lot that I've actually had to do um, some repair to, and, um, or attempted to do some repair. There's a missing stone here and over here, haven't finished. But as I'm looking closely at this ring, although it is labeled as 925, this ring has been cleaned by me and it literally looks like it's got some, tar not tarnishing, but I'm seeing some copper show through, which is making me think that, I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but I most certainly have had things marked as 925 and then later found out that they weren't. That it was like a sham. Uh, somebody's, uh, you know, I guess illegally marking it. I know this has a mark inside of it, uh, right there. Is that upside down? Let's see if I can bring it up here really close. Oh, it is upside down. Sorry. I'm just learning. Be patient with me. Here it is, 95. But I'm sure you can see, just like me, that there's some copper showing through, which is highly disappointing. Let me uh, use my magnet on that wherever I have put my magnet. Sorry for the hold up here. I'm going to put it away in something. I apologize. I am coming. Oh, how disappointing. I'm going on about how great the lot is and not that they know, but I haven't tested this, but um, it's not magnetic. Does anyone, you guys can tell me in the comments, but I mean, it's not magnetic, but it's definitely losing its silver, which shouldn't if it's 925. It's not 925 silver plated. It is actually 925. So I'm going to have to investigate that. I'm going to physically test it on my um, stone, but that will be for another day. Anyways, that being said, um, what I'd like to continue with in this conversation is, um, uh, I wonder why that, that's okay. um, I would like to, uh, bring some of the item, other items that were in that lot that came. So I talked about some of the jewelry being, um, you know, 
damage. This one to me was beyond repair. Um, oh, I'm so bad at this. I'm trying. Why does that not want to focus? Am I too close? Is it focusing on this? Let me move this. I'm so confused. Well, there we go. It's not perfect, but anyways. This ring had so many missing stones in it that it, to me, wasn't even worth trying to fix. I'm just going to put it in my 925 scrap. Um, I mean, I think there is only about five or six marcasite stones left. This one's in really sad shape, so we'll have to say goodbye to that little guy. Anyways, um, so he was also um, in that lot. Um, I... Um, had lots of pendants that came in that lot. This is one of them. Um, some pretty little, uh, you know, faceted um, black hanging beads there. Um, also no damage, lovely. Um, I'll be putting that up on my um, eBay page. Um, other things that came in that lot, oh my gosh, I love these. I'm not selling them because I love them and they're gonna stay with me. Um, these are gorgeous uh, mother of pearl um, earrings that came in that lot. Um, I just love the colors in them. They're just extraordinary. And uh, also no damage in my scrap lot. And if I bring it real close, you should hopefully be able to see where it's marked 925. Anyways, um, they're just gorgeous. I love them. So still, my one lot that came. Um, this is one little uh, 925 earring that was definitely scrapped because I only have one of them. So um, I will be I will be putting that in my scrap lot. Oh, this is just um, extraordinary. Okay, so I am, in fact, a cat owner. I only have one cat, along with a bearded dragon, and a pet mouse and a dog. Um, mind you, those are all my children's pets, not mine. But originally I've always been a cat lover. And this is just a gorgeous pin um, that came in that lot. Also no damage. Um, and uh, 925, uh, you can see it way up at the top right there. The, back of the cat. Um, I don't think I have the heart to sell him. I'm going to have to keep him, but I like him. Maybe I should name him. Okay, let me see what else I can find that was part of that lot. I mentioned to you that there were several earrings that came in the lot. This part is scrap um, that uh, there was only one of. And so here's a handful of those things. I mentioned to you that I had taken this little frog and turned him into a pendant. Um, he was a um, earring, but I only had one of them and I just thought he was too cute. I turned him into a pendant. And um, I think I'm going to do the same with a lot of these other um, items. Uh, this was one earring by itself that came. I have not tested that stone yet. Maybe I should test that, um, figure out what it is. But it will be very easy for me to turn that into a pendant by either um, connecting onto the loop a some sort of, um, you know, uh, what do you call the thing that goes on the necklace? There's a name for it. <gasps> Tell me in the comments. I know the name. Why can't I remember? The part of a necklace. Oh, it's going to come to me while we talk. I know what the name is. I just can't think of it right now. Another missing earring where there's only one but no damage. I'll turn that one into a necklace pendant. Another beautiful earring. 
Simple things. This is much more dainty, but it could still make a lovely pendant. Um, all of this, I'm not gonna bore you with showing you 95 and every single one of these, but it is on them. Um, now this requires some work, definitely. Um, if you look closely on this piece, there is um, definitely some missing marcasite um, spaces that need to get repaired. Um, I thought that was mother of pearl, but it has no, you know, pearlness to it. So I'm really not quite sure what that is. Some type of shell maybe. Um, so I don't know, it's a work in progress. Let's see. Bail, it's called a bail. <laughs> On the top of a pendant, you're supposed to, um, have a bale, and so I do know what I'm talking about. It's a bale right there. Okay, um, last uh, earring that I'm going to turn into a pendant. It is stuck apparently like this. It's not supposed to be stuck. It's supposed to come over here in this little space. But of course, right now when I wanna to talk to you, it's doing this and I can't move it without damaging it, so I'm not gonna try. But anyways, another lovely piece that came in that lot. 925 as well. Still the same lot for uh, 81 bucks. Not bad. I'm not done yet. More to come. Okay. Um, I said there were a few pins in that lot. Love this. Gorgeous um, pin. I don't know how old it is, um, but uh, very antique looking. Um, I don't know if that's onyx the dark stone there and i really haven't cleaned it up a bunch i know it definitely could use some cleaning um but it's a gorgeous um um pin uh i know it's not too terribly old if it still has this kind of um, safety clasp i think there are definitely some clasps that the type of clasp can give you a an idea of the age of the piece but um, it doesn't change the fact that it's gorgeous, and I quite love that um, pendant. I'm not done yet. More to come. Let's see here. Also in that lot, another pendant with no damage. I believe that this is Ruby when I tested it on my... Um, Actually, I have a diamond pen tester, but um, Ruby, in terms of where it falls on the um, scale, is higher up there, way higher up there than Garnet. Um, and the colorings are more Ruby-like, kind of more of that pinkish red. Um, and Ruby to me kind of, I mean, Garnet tends to have more of that kind of rusty red. Um, but anyways, so that's Ruby, just as this is Ruby in this ring. They definitely have a similar color to them. Beautiful pendant. Um, okay. Now this one definitely must be an older pin because as I was talking about um, clasps, um, it's an older clasp. If I can get up here and show you really close. This is just so detailed. It's got beautiful floral details. How come I can't? There we go. Just gorgeous. Also not missing any stones. Um, but its clasp is this more dated clasp. I don't remember what you call this kind of clasp, but it's definitely an older style clasp. Um, it'd be interesting to research. I don't see any maker's mark on this. Um, brooch, I mean, on this um, pin slash brooch. Uh, but I also haven't done a Google image search on it yet, so maybe something will come up that maybe I can find out some more information. I think I have to remember to keep my hand here before I try to focus, because then it tries to focus on what's below. I was coming up here to see if we could see the 925, but... I'm not seeing it the second. Doesn't mean it's not there. It's just not in view at this moment. Anyways, gorgeous pin. I love the little flowers. Okay. 
Okay, almost there, almost there. Another item that came in that scrap lot, the first scrap lot I've ever gotten from Goodwill. It was a 925 scrap lot. It was this gorgeous locket. Came with the chain. Oops, I'm hooking it on my cat's leg. Just a box chain, 925 as well. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and try to show you every single time. But that is a box chain, 925. Um, and this beautiful heart um, locket, uh, also no damage, um, opens it up and it's kind of thicker. So you could actually fit something more significant in there besides just a picture. But if you look closely here, you can see the 925 markings there. No maker's mark, but um, it doesn't change that it's quite beautiful. So another item, another part of that lot that came. Um, I think I have one more item to show you and then this is it. This is my scrap lot, not very scrappy. Uh, a pair of um, marcasite uh, heart earrings that also were not missing any um, stones. Quite lovely. Only thing about them is that what I believe to be thought mother or pearl, but maybe it's not because it really doesn't have kind of that pearliness to it. It's more matted. I'm not really quite sure what that would be then. Does anyone know what kind of shell would be less pearlescent? Pearl-like? I mean, it looks like Mother of Pearl inlaid, but maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm just learning. But anyways, so that's what I wanted to show you. Um, definitely worth, uh, you know, getting, um, spending your money on those um, scrap lots. Uh, I don't know. It makes me nuts when I open some of the regular costume jewelry um, boxes and I just find crap. It makes me crazy because I just want to go in there and find a needle in it. I mean, find a diamond in a in the rough, and that doesn't always happen. But it's fun to get this in the mail, if you know what I mean. So anyways, I'm going to clear all this out, and um, I was going to, you know, spend a little bit more time showing you some other um, finds, which was my original um, video, was finds uh, that can be had at estate sales and garage sales and... Um, you know, uh, thrift stores, um, flea markets, uh, vintage stores, um, and Shop Goodwill. Obviously, online shopping as well. Um, so, I tend to find a lot of my stuff, though, although this was from Shop Goodwill, um, in uh, thrift stores. And so, some of the stuff I showed you the other day, or consignment stores, were from... Um, those kind of situations. So let me see what other things I want to show you. Um, actually, I'm going to show you a few items that are mine that were my grandmother's handed down to me. Um, my grandmother has passed and just recently my mother passed. So a lot of the jewelry that my grandmother had went to my mother and then came to me. Um, this is a very old piece uh, locket. And before I ever knew how to really figure out the history on what something's made of or we're finding maker's marks and, you know, um, marks for uh, precious metal, um, I didn't even know what this was made of. Um, but I took it to a jeweler. This was just an old locket of my grandmother's. Um, and he found a, um, a mark inside. It's very faint. But this is, in fact, a... Um, gold filled item. I don't know if you can see that it's right inside that heart. Um, lovely um, locket. Um, and I'm thinking, well, if this is gold filled, then there's no way that that's a diamond on the inside. And the, the jeweler said, well, no, that's not actually the case. Um, sometimes they did put uh, diamonds inside, you know, even gold-filled things, or maybe even sterling silver things. 
Um, uh, this has been tested it in, and it is in fact a very small diamond. Um, but this is kind of precious to me because it um, was my grandmother's. I don't know exactly how old it is, but uh, you know. Oh, and the chain is also gold filled according to the jeweler. Okay, so some other items that came from my grandmother passed down when my mom died. Um, this is a lovely um, old uh, bracelet that I wasn't sure whether or not it was real or not. And of course, I didn't know what I was doing, so I took it to a jeweler. And he informed me that looking at the um, maker's mark or the imprints that um, it is also gold filled. I don't know if you can see that. What does that say? 10 karat gold filled maybe? I'm not sure. I'm so blind. This is what 52 years old does to you. I can't get it to focus. It's driving me nuts. <sighs> this is why I do practice videos. Perfect example. And I could shut the whole thing off and start over, but I'm sure as hell not doing that. We all have to learn somehow. Okay. Let me just get my jeweler's loop. I think it's 10 karat gold filled. But anyhow... Um, very art deco to me. Um, I love this bracelet. I wear it quite often. It came from my grandmother. Lovely, lovely. Um, let me get my jeweler's loop. Yes, okay, sorry. One slash 20, 10 karat gold filled. Okay. Love it. Okay, some other items. Uh, it was some family items. Okay, this isn't gonna be that like extraordinary or moving. But uh, this was, in fact, my grandmother's um, wedding ring. My grandmother was the oldest, I'm sorry, uh, she was the mother of 10 children, Catholic family. Um, my mother was the oldest of the 10. Um, so this ring has been through some wear, and it's been so worn down. It definitely has some white gold and some yellow gold um, in it. And three of the teeniest little diamonds. I have to get my jeweler's loop to see them. Um, and when my mother passed away, she wore it for years on her hand. She had dainty little size five fingers. I'm a five and a half, so I had to get it resized. And I don't have the, um, I can't see the imprint in there because we had it resized, but I know that it's 10 karat. Um, this isn't like, you know, blowing your mind or anything, but it's just the meaning that this is the wedding ring that has gone through so many generations in my family. So that's it. Okay. Um, some other things that came from my grandmother. So when my grandmother died, um, she had given this to my mother and there were silver rings that went to the daughters of the family and this is the one that came to my mother and my mother sat there and told me the story when she gave it to me um, yeah it's real it's real um, you know it does in fact have inside of it um, I believe 10 carat Let's see if I can get this to focus 10 carat gold um, 
And that doesn't say gold filled. That actually is a, 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 a hallmark for a jeweler because that says FG and it's actually a jeweler hallmark. But um, when I got this ring, I'm like, mom, this can't be a real emerald. I mean, my God, I'd be like rolling in dough, like, and it's too clear because, you know, real emeralds actually would have lots of, um, you know, you would see their imperfections. And so I took this to the jeweler and he in fact um, said that it was made of glass. Um, it's not even a simulated um, emerald. But back then that wasn't an unusual thing. And these um, stones on the side are not even diamonds. They are also glass. Um, but I was like, you know, should I sit there and like replace the diamonds? I was talking to the jeweler about it and he's like, listen, this ring has a lot of meaning to you because it came down through generations and it's quite lovely and I agree. And he said, I mean, the, the actual stone size here is huge, which means this 10 carat gold ring setting is real the real value in this ring. The uh, jeweler said it was, you know, worth about 9 hundred to a thousand dollars just the setting so you know I decided I'm just going to leave it just as it is and enjoy the ring that was enjoyed by my mother and my grandmother but to make the enjoyment better I went and I had some um I wanted to get some earrings that could go with it um these are gold new uh sorry I dropped one somewhere where has my stone gone? Here it is. So these are simulated emeralds, um, emerald cut emeralds, and those are cubic zirconia and um, 10 karat gold. Um, so that when I wear them, I can wear them together. So anyways, that's my little emerald story. This being very old, these being new. I think I mentioned to you the other day about the ring that my mother had passed down to me. This is a uh, an um, amethyst. Is that right? Yes. And I had earrings made to go with it because I also did not have any earrings to enjoy with it. So sorry, I'm fumbling here, I wanted to be able to show you, but I had these earrings made with sort of that sort of filigree edging. Um, they tried to match the am amethyst colorings. It's not perfect, but it still looks good together when I wear it. So anyways, more family things passed down to me with a little bit of new. Um, other things that came from family members. Um, when my grandmother died, she, now I'm going to have to do that in another video because I didn't pull out certain items. Um, anyways, I'm going to move on to, um, a, the other side of my family. Um, this is a beautiful, um, ring that was, um, my dad, uh, his wife, who he's been married to for 30 years. Um, this is a ring that was in their family that, uh, is amethyst. It's hard to see it because the light doesn't shine through it, but it is in fact purple with some, um, little, little teeny dainty pearls. And my stepmom's side of the family is actually from Australia and so it wasn't uncommon for a lot of their gold there to be rose gold and I don't know if you can sort of see the difference between a rose gold piece versus a 10 karat gold it definitely has that little touch of pinkiness to it quite lovely but uh, I was lucky enough to um given that beautiful ring to enjoy. I just absolutely love it. 
And if I can get this close up, you can see it's got some gorgeous filigree um, edging around those stones. Come on, focus, you can do it. It's just beautiful. Going on the concept of rose gold, also coming from my stepmom in the whole Australia family gift stuff are these beautiful um, opal earrings in rose gold. Uh, if you know anything about Australia, they're obviously well known for their opals, fiery, colorful opals. And I believe that the kind of fire and color of the opals has a lot to do with where they're mined. Um, I don't, I don't in any way claim to be a, um, a professional in this topic, but these are lovely, dainty little um, opal earrings that I am enjoying. Okay. Okay, this is not from my grandmother. This was my mother's. Um, but she was, she was many things. She was a, a mother. She was a sister and a mother and a grandmother. Um, but she also for many years played instruments. Um, she was a square dance caller. She was a counselor as a profession. And um, when I was going through her jewelry box after she passed, I came across these gorgeous um, um, violins, uh, sterling silver. Um, violins with actual strings on it. I love it. It's very my mother. And it's got the number 48 on there. I really don't know what the significance of that is. Um, the 48. But um, and there on the back, you can see that it, it's really dirty. But it says sterling right there in the center in that box. So that's a lovely... And this is um, actually made of, um, uh, it's the resin that's, uh, now I'm not going to be able to remember the name of it. Um, where is my brain? Another um, beautiful uh, brooch that is a violin. And um, what is that stuff called? <sighs> okay, now i got to look it up on my phone. I swear. I don't know where my brain is. You guys are probably dying down there in the comments. Oh, well, those are wood, little wood island. These are also the same kind of stone. It's made from a sap of a tree. I know it. I just can't remember the name of it. These are beautiful earrings that I got at an estate sale a couple of years ago. Let's see if I take a picture of those, what happens. If it'll give me the name. Amber. Ugh, it's Amber. Darn it. Ugh. Didn't remember it. Anyways, so a, a gorgeous amber um, violin, you know, with all the beautiful little strings. I just love it. So dainty. And so my mother. Okay, I'm just going to keep pulling out some different pieces here and some finds that I've had. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is show you a whole bunch of uh, jade and gold and gold filled items that I've uh, been lucky enough to find at thrift stores. And maybe I'll finish up with this because obviously my video has gone long enough. There's a thrift store that I go to quite often. Um, let me pull this little thing out here, but here's a gorgeous, um, jade and gold tone. Um, it's not actually just gold tone. It is, in fact, gold filled, I believe. Let me get my jewelry clip. Yep. 
Yes, it says 12 karat gold filled Winward, whatever brand that is. But so classic, I just love the color of just that jade with gold. I just think it's lovely. I think I probably paid um, $5 for that because it was probably like 75% off. I'm a cheapskate, so I really won't buy things until the color comes up where they're cheap, cheap, cheap. Okay, here's some other jade things. And then I think I'm gonna call it a day. This one, it looks like I spent $4 on. Very similar in coloring to my branch thing. And it also, in its mark says 12 karat gold filled windward. Okay, so same brand, no wonder they look so similar. Almost like they came from the same brand, jeweler, same brand. Okay, this little guy, he is not gold filled. He is, um, doesn't even have a, a, a maker's mark on him. But I found him out at, at a consignment store one day. And um, let me take this price tag off. Like I said, I had all this stuff inside my antique booth. Um, so I hadn't gotten all that. Okay. Uh, but isn't he cute? This bird. I don't know if that's a roadrunner or what, but they are faux pearls. The little red eye there. And um, this is definitely not real jade. It feels more plasticky. No... Um, maker's mark on the back, but I just think he's fun. I don't know. I probably spent $2 on him just because he just makes me happy when I look at him. A cute little road runner. Okay. One last thing. You see, my videos have no rhyme and reason. I start off talking about one thing and I get let off in another direction. <laughs> okay, I just bought these the other day. Also jade um, and gold filled items. Um, I could show you the maker's mark, but I don't wanna take the time. Um, but this is a like a choker um, length uh, necklace. Um, let's see if I can hold it there. I don't think I can. I think I'm just gonna let it hang. Okay, and at the same uh, day, I found this beautiful, um, dainty, pretty small bracelet, also gold filled in jade. And I just think they go together really well. So I just need an occasion to go somewhere where I can wear my beautiful jade and gold filled pin with my necklace and my bracelet. Um, but my social life is not that exciting. I don't have anywhere to go. My husband needs to give me a date, somewhere fun. Anyways, I won't take it off, but um, it looks beautiful on my wrist. So um, that's it, I all I have for today. I did just recently today um, actually go to um, my favorite thrift store and I actually bought a um, one of those bags uh, of jewelry. I think it was like $34. Um, so maybe I'll open it up here for my next video and do an un unbagging of a thrift store jewelry. I just, it drives me nuts when I open them because there's often so much junk in there that I have to sort through to get to some good stuff. And sometimes there's never this much good stuff. This is accumulation of good stuff. But um, all that being said, thank you for joining me, uh, Cherished Relics Boutique YouTube. And um, please make sure to, again, I haven't figured out where I'm gonna put my subscribe button, but it will either be uh, in this corner or this corner. Um, please subscribe. Um, and um, I look forward to um, having you join me uh, for my next video with Cherished Relics Boutique. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.